All right, and we are back. Sorry about that. We dropped our live stream for some reason. We're not sure what happened. It must have been on our end. Um, so we're going to assume that you guys haven't heard about me talking about the Ashcroft Pool. So I'm going to go back to that story. Uh, so the Ashcroft Pool is... Uh, will be open Saturday, July 4th. The Ashcroft Pool will be open for public swimming on July 4th. New rules and guidelines will be in place to ensure uh, health and safety within the COVID-19 pandemic. Risk of transmission through swimming pools is and, and remains low. Follow the Ashcroft Pool and Park Facebook page and Instagram page for more info on for the new safety guidelines, schedules, fun updates, and more. And there is a job posting for the pool. Uh, so the Village of Ashcroft job posting is for a lifeguard and the required certificate uh, qualifications are your National Lifeguard Service or NLS award, Red Cross Aqua Leader Certificate, CPR Certificate, uh, and the job, uh, what you'll be doing is chemical testing, pool monitoring, safety procedures, cleaning, and concession. Sales are all part of the lifeguard, uh, lifeguard's job description along with other duties as required. The rate of pay is $18.44 per hour, and this position runs from the first week of July through to Labor Day. Hours of work vary from approximately 24 to 32 hours per week, and qualified individuals are invited to submit their resumes and the dates they are available for employment by 4 p.m. on June 24, 2020. You can send those into the village office. Copies of all current uh, qualifications must be included with your resume, and a criminal record check will be required after the um, employment is made. The, also, if you do not get contacted, it means that they went another way, uh, but they thank you for your interest on that. And there is actually another job posting in the village of Ashcroft currently for a summer employment position uh, in parks maintenance. So the village of Ashcroft has one position available in the parks department for the summer months. Uh, this position is a union position or QP Local 900 and will start immediately and continue to Labor Day and will be for 40 hours per week at $21.07 per hour. This position, will be of in this position will be of interest to anyone enjoying outdoor work. As the successful candidate will be working in public facilities, he or she uh, should be comfortable dealing with people and be prepared to answer general questions. Applicants must also hold a valid Class 5 driver's license and duties include all aspects of park maintenance as well as occasional janitorial duties. The position is designed for a student who will be returning to a post-secondary institution in the fall. The village is also, uh, the village is an equal opportunity employment and this position is open to both male and female applicants. Interest, interested parties are invited to submit their resumes to the following address by 4 p.m. on Friday, June 24th. And of course, that is to the village uh, office. Um, so those applicants not contacted by June 30th are thanked for their interest as well. So if you're looking for a job, Ashcroft is currently hiring. Um, so in Cash Creek, though, even though uh, there can't be a graffiti day show and shine, they can still have some fun on Saturday morning. The gang will be out cruising the streets of Cash Creek and Ashcroft. The cruise begins at 10 a.m. at the Info Center in Cash Creek and then moves to Ashcroft about 10.30. Come on out to watch the cruise go by and get some pictures. Um, so that is, of course, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. in Cash Creek and 10.30 in Ashcroft. Uh, you can find the route on the Graffiti Days Facebook page. Um, and there, it looks like they're driving mostly all around Ashcroft and only in certain places in Cash Creek. Uh, so check that out if you want to make sure to be able to get pictures of the classic cars that are in our area. And if you are concerned about paying your property taxes this year, the province offers a Deferent, deferment payment, uh, you can apply directly to the province. Uh, please note taxes must be up to date to take advantage of that. So if you are behind on your this year's current taxes, uh, you can get a deferment program through the province. But again, you have to have your taxes up to date. Um, now, Brad, this has been pretty busy. I got a couple things to talk about with our uh, MP for the area. So we sent out a thing for everybody in the mail. So I'm just going to talk about this a little bit. Uh, so 
Uh, dear constituents, we are living through a unique time in the history of our nation. According to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, the Government of Canada is spending an unprecedented amount of taxpayer funds without an overall economic plan. Our domestic food supply chain faces new challenges and global supply chains are also being strained. Millions of Canadians have lost their jobs and do not know when they'll return to work. Your opinion matters. Please complete the survey to help me stand up for you in Ottawa. Your feedback uh, will help inform our recovery plan. Uh, so the questions that he asks include um, assistance for individuals. Uh, so this is a ticky box um, survey. So temporary wage top up for low income essential workers, Canada emergency response benefit, Canada emergency student benefit. So if you have taken advantage of one or all of those things, you can tick off all of those boxes. And also assistance for businesses. They're wondering if you have taken advantage of the Canada emergency wage, wage subsidy, business credit available bill, availability program, and the Canada emergency commercial rent assistance program. So if you haven't gotten one of these, um, give Brad Viss a call. And what's his number here? Does he have it on? No, he doesn't. But you can find him on Facebook or Twitter. He is very open to taking phone calls. Um, so check him out. Take, fill out the survey. Let him know what you've been able to come up with during COVID. And uh, let him have his, let him help you have your voice in Ottawa. Now he's also, he is going back to Ottawa, I believe starting on the 22nd, I wanna say, if not next week, right away. Uh, so um, good luck to Brad in uh, taking care of our issues across the country. Now, uh, he also says on his Facebook page, the COVID-19 pandemic has made clear to us just how crucial a reliable internet connection is for everyone. Uh, but what is what it has also highlighted is the critical lack of access that is ex exists for Canadians who live in rural and remote parts of our country. So I was just he did a, uh, a live stream uh, talk with a few other people, and that was a big topic that they covered. So if you want to see the rest of that, you can go to his Facebook page and watch the live streams that he's been doing with other people that belong in Parliament. These are his. Uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Committees that he is a part of get together and they do these videos. So it's pretty interesting uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Now Jackie Taggart says, you are here. Together we have done an incredible job working together to support each other, spread love and positivity and flatten the curve towards beating COVID-19. A massive thank you to our healthcare workers and essential workers. Your bravery, sacrifices and tenacity will never be forgotten. We are forever appreciative of you and thank you for everything you've done. It hasn't been easy to stay apart from family and friends, uh, change from shaking hands and hugging and waving and not change from shaking hands and hugging to waving and nodding and adapt to the new normal. Um, uh, so you are here. We have made it this far. The curve is flattening and BC is reopening. I urge you to continue physical distancing, washing your hands frequently, limiting your travel to your local area and keeping your gatherings essential and small. We will make it through this together. Hashtag stand together six feet apart. That is from our MLA, Jackie Taggart. Um, and if you want to see an interview that we did with her just a few weeks ago, you can check out our uh, YouTube channel. Um, she has a lot of really good stuff to say, so check that out. Um, Interior Health uh, has a thing saying, not only are we going through COVID-19, but we are still trying to manage the opioid uh, pandemic. So Interior Health shared uh, some information about a new app to try and help people with drug addiction. Uh, so how the, ha how the app helps people uh, is called Le the Lifeguard app and supports people who are in the highest risk of overdose death. Uh, people who use substances alone. 90% of overdose deaths happen when people who use drugs are alone, but the time, uh, by the time someone is found by family or friends and emergency responders arrive, it's often too late to save their life. Uh, this app empowers people who use drugs to take charge of their health and helps them to uh, survive accidental overdose. Uh, app users can access treatment options quickly and easily directly through the app, this means that users can remain safer until uh, they are ready to start their journey to recovery. How it works. 
Uh, when someone is about to use, especially alone, they can open the app and record the type of substance they are using and confirm their location. The app will hold this information uh, and a timer is set which can be paused or extended by the app user at any time. As the timer ends, the app will sound an alarm, flash a light, and vibrate. The user must hit a button to stop the alarm and indicate that they are fine. If they are unable to stop the, the alarm, a text to voice call will go straight to 911. This alerts emergency medical dispatchers of a possible overdose. It may, have someone, it may save someone's life if they become unconscious or unable to function uh, when using alone. The app can be used anywhere there is data or Wi-Fi, and the Province Health Services Authority, uh, BC Emergency Health Services Health, Health Authorities, and the Overdose Emergency Response Centre have been working closely with Lifeguard Digital Health to make the app available to British Columbians during the past two years. They have been tested and piloted. The app is in controlled environments. Uh, so if you have someone that you know that uses drugs, it is safest uh, to use with a friend or access overdose prevention services and supervise consumption sites if they are available. If you su suspect an overdose, call 911 right away. And that's actually a really cool thing, uh, very intuitive. Um, the, they're saying that the opioid pandemic is, um, has been going on for many, many years now and is now running concurrent with uh, coronavirus, but we can't forget about uh, the people that are looking for help. So that is uh, great news. From the province, John Horgan did a press conference the other day. The government has passed an order that will halt all litigation moving forward uh, for, for provincial sports teams, including lacrosse. And what I mean by that is um, they're trying to get sports teams back out there, and this includes everything from minor to major uh, sports sporting events. Um, but insurance companies won't cover uh, events or teams for COVID. Um, so what the province has done is they've stopped any litigation against a specific team if there is a COVID outbreak. So if someone goes and does the game and people at the game get sick and that person brings it home, you can't sue the team. Um, you're sort of playing at your own risk. Um, other things that he talked about, he mainly talked about sports and film. So he spoke again about uh, have the possibility of hosting this year's NHL season in Vancouver and across the province. Um, so that would be pretty interesting, kind of like how we had the Olympics uh, like 10 years ago. All the teams would come here, stay here, and they would play in various cities across uh, BC, but there would be nobody allowed in the arena to watch. Um, so everybody would be watching from home anyway, but he's hoping that we can host all of the games and bring that revenue uh, to the restaurants and stuff as people are trying to get back out uh, for, instead of having to physically distance. So that is interesting. Also, the local film and television industry is looking to, at getting started up again, and it would have a 14-day quarantine for anyone that is coming in from other countries. So if like a director is coming in from L.A., that director would have to quarantine for 14 days um, since he's coming in from the States. But... BC has a very large uh, film industry pool of people to draw from. So it'll be, uh, and being a person that has worked in the industry myself, it'll be great to see how um, all of that starts back up. And you can go to the government of BC's Facebook page and participate in, actually right now there is a virtual town hall on anti-racism in BC. Uh, that is uh, today and the, on the Government of BC's Facebook page. And on June 17th, if you're interested, BC's Small Business and COVID-19 Virtual Town Hall is uh, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. So join those events if you are in a small business or if you're right now interested in anti-racism in BC. Check those out and uh, let us know if you watch those. Let us know what your thoughts are. I might try and pick up on the small business one next week uh, since I'm clearly doing this and not able to participate in the anti-racism one. Um, now, some other things of interest. Talking about racism. In an interview with Global News, RCMP Commissioner Brenda Lucky uh, says while she believes there is an unconscious bias among members in the police force, she is struggling with the definition of systemic racism and how that applies to the institution of the National Police Force. In an interview with the West Block's Mercedes Stephenson on Wednesday, uh, Lucky was asked about the surge in anti-racism protests about 
around the world, and in response to the outrage and horror at the death of George Floyd, who died after being pinned under the knee of a Minnesota police officer. She goes on to say that she thinks that there are problems for sure and some things need to change. Uh, respect shouldn't be demanded, respect should be earned. But she, didn't, but, she does, but she doesn't believe that with her understanding of systemic racism, she does not believe that every officer is racist. Each situation should be looked at individually. She says that there are over 3 million RCMP calls a year and 99.9% .9 of them uh, are nonviolent calls. When asked about defunding the police, she says that she supports working closer with other suggested agencies and maybe even embed social workers with police officers, but, uh, and the, but those, decisions, and those decisions should take place, but did not specifically say one way or another in regards to defunding. Uh, now, another thing that's going on today is the grad, uh, the Desert Sands Community School graduation parade and video tonight. Um, so if you are a graduate, you are on the, in Cache Creek, I believe, is it at, it is at 6, is it at 6.30 or 7? 5.30. Sorry, 5.30 in Cache Creek. Uh, so the grads will be standing on the road, and you can drive by the grads as they wave to you. Kind of like, they're calling it a reverse parade. And then it'll be at 7 o'clock in Ashcroft. 6.30. Six, no, no it's, it's, they get there at 6.30, but they start at 7. The, the, the reverse, so the grads standing and you driving is at 6.30, and the grads driving and you waving is at 7. Why, why would they do it both ways? Anyway, uh, so they're doing four parades then. Um, one where they stand on the side of the road, you drive by them, and then they get in their cars and they drive by you. So that'll be 5.30 in Cash Creek, 6.30 in Ashcroft. Make sure to check that out. Um, and then at 9 o'clock tonight, there is a drive-in, uh, mainly for the grads and their families. Only. Only for the grads and their families that is up at Tim Hortons. But we will be playing the video, or we'll have it up on our YouTube channel tomorrow. Um, on our Hub Online Network YouTube channel. Uh, what else do we got? So talking about Cash Creek, uh, we have an evacuation alert rescinded. So please be advised that all evacuation alerts for all properties within the boundaries of Cash Creek are rescinded as of 0900 hours, June 9th, 2020. The Village of Cash Creek staff will continue to monitor river levels to ensure the safety of all residents. Uh, banks continue to be highly saturated and unstable, so stay well back and keep pets and children at least 10 feet back from the banks. So that is awesome news. That means that I'm no longer on evacuation alert. Um, now, the museum in Ashcroft is open as of, uh, I believe, the beginning of this week. S beginning of next week, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm so glad Jessica's here to correct me. Uh, so... Please do not visit the museum if you have experienced any of these symptoms in the last 10 days. Fever, chills, new or worsening cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, and new muscle aches or headaches. Uh, visitors will be required to wear masks. If you do not have one, we will provide one for you. Use hand sanitizer upon entrance provided for you inside. Follow arrows in a one-way only direction. Uh, maintain required distance of 2 meters or 6 feet and refrain from touching artifacts. Uh, further information, no public washroom will be on site. Children 12 and under must be accompanied by an adult. Uh, we have small spaces in the museum. If you, find, uh, if you find the front door is locked, it is because we are temporarily at capacity. Uh, this door will be open as soon as more space is available. Entrance is by donation. You will find donation box to your left when you enter. We will not be handling cash, so no change will be given, and there will be no souvenirs or books being sold at this time. Staff will be frequently cleaning commonly touched surfaces, such as stairs, rails, uh, display cases, etc. And please use the atomic automatic door button on the left side of the door with your elbow or knee to enter or exit the museum. Thank you for your patience and understanding, the Ashcroft Museum staff. So that is awesome. Things are starting to, starting to open up, especially in Ashcroft. So that's really good to hear. Now, a new thing has come out about 
uh, daycare and things of that sort for next year. So full-time and part-time child care begins September 8th. Uh, so one, ch uh, one child care, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The day rate is $40 and full-time monthly rate is $500. Part-time uh, with early learning focus, Monday to Friday, 9 to 11.30. Uh, three days a week is $75 a month, and four days a week is $100 a month. Uh, before and after school care, Monday to Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. is $5 a day, and Monday to Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. is also $5 a day. So Ashcroft Early Learning Program, located at Desert Sands Community School, is proud to offer quality child care and early learning experiences for children. The pilot program is uh, supported by the Board of Education of School District number 74 and registration packages can be found at SD 74. So that is awesome news. Um, now we're going to talk about the council meetings. So uh, in Ashcroft everything was pretty standard. Um, it was a fairly quick meeting. I think it was about 15 minutes long and of course you can watch all of the uh, Ashcroft and Cash Creek Council meetings on our YouTube channel. We have been filming them for about nine months now, nine or ten months now. Uh, so we have a pretty uh, significant ba uh, uh, library of videos that you can check out. Um, some of the major things that they sort of talked about was they um, have sent in their statement of financial information to the government. Uh, they were not required to do this until August 31st, but since it's already done, they decided to just send it in. So that's uh, good for them for staying ahead. Um, they have a new social media policy and, of course, a new person handling their social media in Ashcroft. Again, her name is, her name is Amy O'Rourke. Um, she is an intern for the village of Ashcroft, so welcome, Amy, to the job. Um, the re they talked about the reopening of village facilities, such as the museum and the pool. Uh, the, there are now disposal fees back in place uh, for household garbage up at the landfill. Um, and that is really all the big stuff. I'll have a, a more in-depth, I keep saying I'm going to do this, uh, but I would like to have a more in-depth uh, look at what is going on at both of our councils. So maybe on my every other week, so every off week from the council meetings, I'll do that. Um, so that is all the big stuff from the Ashcroft Council. And then the Cash Creek Council happened. So let's get into that a little bit. Uh, it was pretty interesting. If you're going to watch a uh, council meeting, uh, I definitely watch this one. Um, it was all pretty standard until they started talking about economic development. So one of the big things was the 2020 Economic Development Capacity Building Grant, which um, was passed. And it's, uh, it's in regards to cannabis and hemp readiness and waste. Uh, so that was, that was great. Uh, they're trying to do a thing where they put in $25,000 or $50,000 and they get a grant for another $50,000. Uh, but the way that this would work is NDIT gives $50,000, the village puts in fifty, dollars and a society takes that money over and then nonprofit groups can uh, take that money out. So the money would go into the bank and the nonprofit groups would have access to the interest that that $100,000 creates. Um, currently, as we found out, there are no nonprofit societies, Charity. charities, sorry, in Cash Creek. Um, so we're not, so, so we're going to do a little bit more digging on this and see who would actually be eligible for this money if this was to happen. Uh, but it is something that the uh, council has voted yes on, and the money would come out of the landfill legacy fund of the $50,000. Um, now, they have not applied for the grant yet. Um, but they're looking at doing that relatively soon. Then, uh, Mayor Tallarico st had to step out. Uh, he had to recuse himself for the next few things. So, Councillor Pittman asked a few questions in the council meeting um, in regards to the 2020 flood response costs, the amounts paid to TW Dynamics and IBEX, and costs related to the berm removal. So, um, for the 2020 flood response costs, Councillor Pittman had requested the total cost paid out for flood response so far this year. CFO Martini is in the process of compiling and filing claims as the village is still in uh, the response stage of the 2020 Freshnet. 
all costs so far incurred in the claimable, there's a lot of um, acronyms here, the information will be approved to council when it is available. So they don't, they still haven't, they still don't know how much all of the uh, flooding has costed the village, despite the fact that they have been on the, in a state of emergency, which gives them access to more provincial funds. Um, but then it came down to the amounts paid to TW Dynamics and IBEX. So Councillor Pittman has requested total amounts paid to TW Dynamics and IBEX. This information is required to be included in the annual report under council remuneration, expenses and contracts as per section 168 of the community charter and as such will be available prior to August 31st when the annual report is due. Now the reason that she brought this up is because both of those businesses are either his business or his son's business uh, and this is Mayor Tallarico's. Um, it was and when it was brought up uh, Councillor Peters and CFO Martini uh, spoke up and said that there was no conflict of interest uh, when they were looking to hire uh, both of these companies they phoned four or five other companies first and then tw dynamics and ibex were the only companies that said yes they would do it um, ipto facto they were the ones that were chosen to um, come in and do all the rip rap placing and rock placing when the flooding was taking place um, and there was a little bit of back and forth about why Councillor Pittman was talking about uh, the conflict of interest statutes. Uh, so anyway, if, if I was you and you, that's something that you were concerned about because Councillor Pittman did say that there were many people that were concerned about this, uh, go watch the video, um, check out what both sides had to say and uh, go from there. So the, really that was the, uh, the, the big thing that happened. Um, on Monday's council meetings and yeah so that's really all of the big things that I have for our show today uh, I'm pretty I'm just gonna make sure that I've covered all of my stuff here uh, oh no I got one more talking about the village of Cash Creek um, so the Cash Creek Village office will be will reopen to the public on Thursday, June 11th, 2020 with a few changes in place for the safety of staff and customers. Please only use the front door. Uh, one side of the stairs is marked as an entrance and the other side as an exit. One person will be permitted in the office at a time. Please do not come into the office. If someone is already at the counter, wait, out, wait until they leave before you come in. If you require the ramp, which is at the back door, please call ahead. Uh, so we know to expect someone at the back door uh, so that it is not locked. Public washrooms will not be available and this and there is plexiglass screen at the front counter and access will be limited to directly inside the door. Hand sanitizers are, is available, services uh, will be wiped down, pin pads and door handles will be sanitized between customers. Please respect physical distancing protocols and help us to keep everyone safe. Um, so that is good news to hear that the Cash Creek Village office is reopening. And that, again, is all I got today. So have yourselves a safe weekend. To all the grads, congratulations to you. Um, we'll see you tonight. And, yeah, so stay safe. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your graffiti days. Oh, what's the Jackson House one? There's a, sorry. Um, so wave. Wave to Jackson House residents and caregivers at 1 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, I'm sorry I forgot about that one. Uh, so that is uh, pretty interesting. There's lots of parades happening this weekend, so make sure that your cars are gassed up and get out there and take part. And uh, yeah, anyway, stay safe. We'll see you guys Monday at 3 p.m. We'll see you there.